Well, thanks for coming out. Um, we're really excited for the tournament after uh, this whole calendar year of being as atypical as you could get relative to playing a, a, a fall in the spring and then turning around and trying to do it again in the fall. Being able to get into the tournament with some semblance of normalcy to, to be able to compete and play, uh, especially the first weekend at home, is um, you know, a real treat for us. So we're excited and uh, excited for the first match. You've never lost a first or second round match here at the pad. When I say that, what, what comes to mind? Why'd you say that? <laughs> like, come on, man. Don't you know how it works? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. Our history is our history. But uh, well, one of the things we know, especially this year, is there's so much more depth and parity than there ever has been in college volleyball. And a lot of that has to do with, yeah, the, the athletes continue to get better and better. But this COVID year, especially with the number of uh, fifth-year seniors and transfers and all the stuff that's going on, there's, there's so many good teams. So, yeah, we love playing at the PAV, and it's been great. Um, and hopefully we can keep the streak alive, but we know we're going to have some, some stiff opposition to do that. Uh, was this the, the point of it all, you mean, to yeah. come? Yeah, I think so. One of the things we knew is that we, the, the way it went in this spring season, um, yeah, there were some good matches, but it was still, it, it still wasn't the, the arena. It still wasn't the, what the Big Ten is. And knowing what we were in for, we, we really wanted to try to be tested in the, in the preseason, and I understood, you know, maybe maybe five and three is not the start you want. I, to me, I thought it was plenty good given the caliber of teams we were playing, but the lessons learned in that phase of our season, I think set us up to go on a nice run and be, you know, 15 and five in the big and tie for third and, and be in the discussion at the very end and, and go toe to toe with the teams that ended up winning it. So I just think there's there's a lot of good in figuring out who you are early, and that maybe gives you a better chance to become who you can become by the end. You wanted to need to do that Big Ten Player of the Year for the second straight season. Uh, it, the, you know, the, it's it's awesome. Obviously, these are more uh, we awards than they are me awards. You know, if the team's no good, it's hard to imagine that we get the Player of the Year. But but um, Stephanie's performance in particular for, for these two seasons has been remarkable, but I'd say even more so this fall. Um, she was really good. She made some wonderful improvements and has just been, you know, such a great part of our team. And, you know, we've been fortunate enough to have uh, Player of the Year in this conference five out of the last seven years. And, um, you know, we say that we, we want to try to teach players to play volleyball, and it seems like it's working out okay. But Steph's another example of just that. Well, there's power in the details, right? And the, there's so many nuances to all sports, but particularly in our sport, there's all these different things you have to do, especially, especially when you're a six rotation opposite. So you're out there all the time. You can't hide any weaknesses. And so for her to continue to develop not just offensive range, because it's no surprise, you know, people aren't somehow shocked when she gets set anymore. <laughs> So they're sending two blockers her way often, and so you can't hit the same shots. You've got to develop more things that you can do with the ball offensively. But in addition, you've got to block, and you've got to dig, and you've got to serve, and you've got to do all these other things, and she's able to do all of it now. And uh, I think as she's leaving us, it feels like she's become the complete package. I think had she left in April, there probably was still a little meat on the bone. Yeah, I mean, who knows what happens with the Magic 8 ball and how they figure it all out, but um, it's, it's beyond our control. So we don't spend too much time assigning emotion to the seed or where we are. We're just happy to be at home. We think we did enough to be a top 16 seed. We're lucky to be hosting. Um, but, you know, were we bummed that we weren't 10th or something? No, we didn't get too wrapped up in that. Just, okay, this is what we are, and... My guess is if we went back and tried to appeal it, they wouldn't have done anything. So 
Yeah, we're not going to put any energy into that. And like you said, being at home, you know, what, what, are the, what is the atmosphere going to be like? Because you were surprised at all those crowds just came right back in droves. It was awesome. And, uh, you know, especially the last couple of weekends, just to have that much juice in the building was wonderful. You know, and, and you know, another, another thing that's been kind of great for, for staff and Heidi and all of our seniors to be able to have a season where it feels normal, where you get to experience why it's so wonderful to play here at Minnesota. The crowd's a big part of that. Yeah. Does that sense to you that like all that's left is to win a national championship if you've knocked on the door oh so close so many times? Uh, yeah, I mean, the outcome goals for our program are fairly well established. You know, we have this history of success competitively, and of course we're trying to come away with some hardware, hardware every year. But I think, you know, there's only so much of that part of the competitive equation that we can control. Uh, like seedings or, you know, injuries or whatever. But, but the reality of what we're trying to achieve here is, is yes, obviously we want the outcomes. We, we significantly prefer winning to the alternative. But we, we, we're the volleyball team. We, ha we have a responsibility for holistic development. So can we be about academic excellence? Can we be about competitive excellence? Can we be about personal development? Can we help these people be better people, not just, you know, treat them as a competitive commodity? I think that matters. And that narrative is not popular. I understand that. And maybe it's not even uh, cool in college sports anymore. But that's what we're here for. It's college sports. I've been in the world where it's four years to be good for two weeks to hope to be good for the last two hours. And that's all about winning. I get that. But this has to be. If we're college sports, we have to be about the whole thing, not just about the outcomes. The problem, of course, is that for our student athletes, their life is connected to their social media. Their social media is all predicated on these snapshots of achievement versus the reality that there's a ton of hard work that goes into that. So it's all about outcomes when really we can only do the best we can. And that's what we're about. Hey, we'll try to do, we'll try to win every time we step on the court. If we're fortunate enough to win the, well, good enough, healthy enough, lucky enough to win it, great. That's the triumvirate right there. But if we're not, I still feel like we do a pretty good job. Our kids graduate. They go off and do great things and stuff other than volleyball. A bunch of them play professionally. They're on the USA team. We're doing our job. What uh, runway does he land for next season? Yeah, it's still, uh, it's still day to day. It's, uh, you know, just one of those injuries that's, um, yeah, not, not, uh, allowing us to make concrete decisions like we would, but it, we're far along, and the, and it hasn't been broken, so it, it, you know we'll we'll just have to see how it goes. As in the team's still playing well, no doubt Taylor would add value, but um, we're also conscious of the fact that she hasn't played for a number of weeks now, so it's hard to just jump right in and you know if you haven't been doing it for a while, it's hard to just go from zero to sixty. Oh, absolutely. No question. No, 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 no. There's no question of that. Uh, Coach, when you talk about kind of the holistic development, um, can you talk a little bit about Melanie as your setter and some of the uh, growth she has shown? Can you talk a little bit about this year being a difficult one for her in terms of learning how to compete in the Big Ten, learning how to be a, you know, a college student, a college athlete in a really unique circumstance? Can you just speak to her development and what she means to your team? Well, obviously, she's a really big part of it. And uh, I think this development piece that we're speaking to is critical for an athlete that came uh, r right before COVID became a thing and then spent a year of just training and not competing and then had a COVID year where it's, will we play today, won't we? We're getting tested every day, all the weirdness that went with that. And then now you've got to stand up and actually do it for reals. It's a whole different thing. You can talk to people all the time about what it's like, but you don't know what it's like until you're in it. Experience is the teacher. And for her, um, yeah, hey, some weaknesses are exposed, some opportunities for improvement, all that stuff. But the wonderful thing about Melanie is that she doesn't get into the whole pity party too much. She just leans into that, sees it as, a, as, as it is, which is an opportunity for improvement, and gets to work. And so... Kudos to her for working through it. But, you know, what is it? It's pay me now or pay me later. At some point in this league, you're going to pay, right? So, uh, like we said with the preseason stuff, let's figure out some of the things we need to work on early. And, you know, she's made significant improvement over the course of the season, and she's going to have a heck of a career here. Jeff, uh, what does the new weapons staff bring that we don't see? 
Well, <laughs> yeah, I, on the volleyball court, consistency, you know, and that's good over time is tough to beat in any sport. And any athlete that can play at her level for as long as she's done it, I mean, that's a really special and unique characteristic. And, you know, what you find, though, is when you're hanging out, she's uh, – hardworking and, and, and humble. You know, she doesn't buy into the hype. She knows that she can always improve, and she's committed to this idea of adding layers of mastery to her game. But she's just, you know, a cool kid that comes to work every day, tries to become better, help her teammates, all that stuff. It's a low ego, high output, you know? Steve, how do you balance scouting the first match versus, you know, obviously it doesn't matter if you don't do you that time. Yeah, especially this year, I think. And I, I would imagine it's probably going to be like this for a while, maybe, maybe from now on. The idea that, you know, you get, uh, quote, unquote, this gimme in the first round, and then you can kind of work your way into the second and kind of go from there. Like, that's, there's none of that. You know, S South Dakota can flat out play. They're good. They've got good arms. They, they're well coached. Um, and, yeah, you know what? We, we know we've got another match, hopefully, the next night, if we can take care of business the first night. But we're not – in any way taking any of it for granted. We have to make sure that we're playing this thing point to point and, you know, see what happens. But, yeah, it, 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 we would be at the very least remiss to, uh, to somehow buy into that idea that, you know, we can just step out in the court and get it done because that's not how it works anymore. Is there some Minnesota flavor in the South Dakota roster? Sure, yeah, they're close by. So they recruit here, as you would expect. All right, wonderful. Nice to see you all. Thanks.